Hello, Stuart McPhee here. I just thought I'd take a few minutes of your time to go through some of the basic things with Metastock. Over the years I've taught a lot of people how to use Metastock, but more importantly how to use the programming language um, to their advantage. And over that time I think I've got a reasonable grasp of some of the most basic common problems that people face with their Metastock use. So I thought I'd go through some very basic uh, problems that people have and, uh, and work our way through them. Uh, firstly, to open a, a chart in our database, there is actually a big difference between opening a new chart or opening a smart chart. Now we can access them through the file menu with a new chart or opening a smart chart. There's actually a big difference between those two and you need to understand the difference and perhaps go to the Metastock manual to read the difference between creating new charts and opening a previously saved chart. For the purpose of this I'm just going to go and create a new chart. Now of course what this allows me to do is to open up a chart from my existing database and you'll notice now I have a, a list of securities here within this folder. Now one thing I'll just talk about is probably the number one most commonly asked question in Metastock and that is often when new users of Metastock open a chart they don't get all of the days loaded into that chart even though they know they have years and years of data in their history. Um, this is probably one of the most commonly asked questions and in this window here if you go to the options uh, menu here and click on load options it's in here that we dictate or tell Metastock A how many days to load and secondly once we've loaded all those periods or days how many of those periods do we display in the window. Now by default Metastock comes with this set at 500 and the display at 250. You'll notice I have an extraordinary large number in there just to ensure that every single part of my history is loaded up into the chart. But that's something certainly you'd like to perhaps change to ensure that all of your history is loaded into this chart. Now once that set we can go along down here and type in the name of perhaps a code of our security or we can scroll through here and find it. I've just typed it in there, clicked open and now my chart appears. Well this brings about probably one of the probably the second most commonly asked question and that is yes my chart is here and it's displayed on a white background but I don't want to look at my charts every time like this. How can I change this? Well just before we get to that and they're called templates just before we get to that I'll just show you the x-axis and the y-axis. Now of course the x-axis is down the bottom and has the date. You can actually right mouse click onto the x-axis and access the properties. Now there's a number of things you can do in here. Firstly you can uh, stipulate what days are loaded and what days are displayed in the chart. You can change the periodicity but uh, one thing that I'll draw your attention to is the grid. You'll notice in the chart we have these vertical dashed lines appearing at spaces every month. I personally don't like them in my chart and you can quite simply remove them by deselecting that uh, checkbox there and take off the show grid. Click OK and you'll notice all the grid lines have disappeared. Likewise for the X or uh, the Y axis you can right mouse click, select, select the Y axis properties and you can also put on a grid if you wish. Notice there, they're every dollar or remove uh, that grid. Now just to change the layout of the main chart here, uh, the first thing I'll do is change the actual price itself. So what we can do is right mouse click, ensure that our mouse is directly above a, a, a price bar somewhere, right mouse click and access the properties of that particular security. And in here we can change the way in which the data is presented and also the colours. And I'll just select uh, green for up and red for down and then click OK. Notice now all the price bars have changed. Now people are generally people are quite comfortable with doing this but of course the next step is ensuring that from now on every chart that we open looks like this. Likewise we can come down to the volume, right mouse click on the volume, access the properties and change the colour to one that we wish and there we go. Finally, and again this is just personal preference and the way I like to have it, I like to look at my charts on a black background so I can right mouse click here anywhere on the background, access the inner window properties, the inner window properties, click on that 
and in here I can change the background color I can also check this box here to apply it to all the windows in the chart and then click OK and notice all of my inner windows now have a black background now there's one more step that's required and that is we want to ensure that every chart that we look at from now on looks like this and then what we need to do is save this layer this look appearance or template as the default template again if you right mouse click anywhere on the background you can access a menu and about halfway down is save as default template if you click on that and say yes to replacing the existing you have now ensured that every chart you open from now on will have this appearance just a few more things so some basic controls of this particular chart of course down the bottom we have a scroll bar which allows us to go back through history and at the end of each that scroll bar we have a left arrow and a right arrow you'll notice if you click any of the arrows you'll move forward or backwards in large chunks if you hold the shift key down and just click the arrows you'll notice you'll move through bar by bar a couple more controls in the bottom right hand corner here clicking on this little white box here allows you to quickly access another chart from the same folder in which this original chart was opened and you can access any of them in there we have magnification or zoom control settings where you can zoom out and likewise you can zoom back in and you also have a zoom reset button which allows you to zoom all the way back out and provide every single piece of history you have in your database in the chart at the one time and of course then we can just zoom back in again two more settings just down here this one here is the rescale y-axis what you'll notice is as you scroll back through the data the y-axis where the price is situated does adjust to accommodate the price bars but every now and again you'll stop in a location where it hasn't probably done the best job it could and notice here it hasn't quite adjusted for all this gap down here if I was to click on the rescale y-axis now if you notice the y-axis where the price is it will just rescale to best fit the price and finally down here is the periodicity of the chart the D there represents a daily chart if you click on that you can change the periodicity of your chart to any periodicity you wish and go to a monthly chart to a daily chart and that's about it